Overwhelming amounts of conflict flooded the city. Angry mobs, impeded bills, and frequent negligence from government workers were the norm in one of the most segregated cities in the United States, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thousands of supporters clashed with counter-protesters, gaining national attention on the issue of fair housing and housing segregation during one of the most progressive eras experienced within the country. In the year of 1968, Milwaukee passed the Fair Housing Law, which prohibited the unfair discrimination against any buyer or renter of a residence. However, the process of passing this law was an intense struggle of conflict and compromise. Frequent riots and protests overwhelmed the city as African Americans strived for equal treatment throughout the area. Two of the most valiant activists among the protesters were known as Father James E. Grappi and Vel Phillips. Together, the two fought alongside Milwaukee's NAACP Youth Council to influence the Common Council to pass the Fair Housing Bill. The passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 paved the way for the outlawing of discrimination in all 50 states. It was a groundbreaking compromise within the Senate that heightened equality among issues such as employment and schooling, but it did not act as a complete fulfillment of the hopes of millions of African Americans across the United States. One of the most major issues that had still not been resolved was housing discrimination. With no fair housing laws in place, homeowners and real estate companies had the ability to deny homes to individuals on account of race, gender, religion, sex, and national origin. Millions of minorities across the country were unable to live an ideal and prosperous life without a proper home to live in. Dominated by European immigrants, Milwaukee's South Side was a stark contrast to the rundown and unreasonably priced homes just to the north on the other side of the Menominee River Valley, where African Americans were forced to move after being continuously denied housing in the South. At that time, there was a lot of uh, black migration coming from the South. Black people were kind of like seen as um, with a lot of disdain. It was sort of compared to the um, Mason-Dixie line. Known as the Inner Core, Milwaukee's north side had a population twice as dense as the rest of the city, in addition to low employment rates. Homeowners and real estate companies merely heightened the tension and conflict within the African American community through their interest in keeping housing discrimination and segregation present in Milwaukee. With no repercussions for refusing homes to minorities, in addition to virtually no legal consequences for building code violations, homeowners found ample financial benefits in the lack of fair housing laws throughout the city. In 1962, six years after being elected as Milwaukee's first woman and first African-American common council member, Alderman Vell Phillips introduced an ordinance in hopes of resolving the housing discrimination conflict throughout the city. The 18 to 1 vote within the council quickly defeated this bill, however, crushing Phillips' hopes of a compromise among her colleagues. Phillips remained the sole voter of her bill four consecutive times. Discredited for her race and gender by her colleagues, Phillips sought after an organization to aid her efforts towards the abolition of housing discrimination in Milwaukee. A longtime supporter of Milwaukee's NAACP Youth Council, she eventually decided to join forces with the organization and their advisor, Father James E. Grappi. Grounded upon the same set of values and hopes of equality for future generations of minorities in the city, the group, along with Phillips, peacefully set forth with the unanimous goal of creating a compromise between the African American community and those against fair housing in Milwaukee. Originally formed in 1919 by black activists in the city, Milwaukee's National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, more commonly known as the NAACP Youth Council, gained a more prominent role in the 1960s when Father James E. Grappi became the advisor of the organization. Father Grappi's passion for civil rights activism stemmed from his transfer to St. Boniface Church in Milwaukee's north side in 1963, where the struggles of African Americans finally became tangible for him after a lifetime spent living in South Milwaukee. From that point forward, Father Grappi became a vocal activist for civil rights, eventually gaining national attention for his perseverance. The NAACP and Father Grappi's efforts began in June 1967 by picketing at the homes of the council members in hopes of reversing the vote on the Fair Housing Bill. From other stances within the council, a compromise was unfortunately unable to be reached among the two parties. It was overwhelmingly obvious that their voices needed to be heard through a more resonating movement. However, violence would soon break out among both sides of the conflict, hindering the NAACP's ability to voice their desires. Father Grappi, like the majority of Americans at the time, was well aware of the civil unrest across the country in 1967 resulting from racial injustices. Known as the long, hot summer of 1967, 159 protests and riots had sparked nationwide, leading to at least 85 deaths and 11,000 arrests. Fearful that a riot similar to those seen in cities such as Detroit and Cincinnati would break out in Milwaukee, Father Grappi warned the Common Council and City of the danger of ignoring the issue of housing segregation. As Father Grappi's warnings had predicted, 
Tensions from the disregarded complaints continue to increase throughout the city. The negligence of the rising conflict by Milwaukee's Common Council and the members' failure to compromise with frustrated minorities resulted in a riot eventually breaking out on July 30, 1967. By July 31st, over 1,700 were arrested and four were dead. Milwaukee Mayor Henry Meyer quickly enforced around-the-clock curfew across the city to prevent any further outbreaks. This curfew further challenged Father Grappi and Vel Phillips' attempts to achieve racial equality throughout Milwaukee. However, the group was eventually able to create a peaceful plan to communicate their cause to the city and the council. On August 28, 1967, Father Grappi and Vel Phillips, alongside 198 other NAACP Youth Council protesters, marched across the inner core and down the 16th Street Viaduct towards the south side to peacefully protest racial discrimination, promoting their proposition of an open housing ordinance. These marches would continue for 200 consecutive nights. By the second night, there were an estimated 13,000 counter-protesters along the marching route, and by mid-September, Milwaukee was seen in the New York Times and on CBS, garnering national support. The actions of Father Grappi, Vel Phillips, and the NAACP attracted the attention of civil rights activists after Martin Luther King Jr. With each night, the marches got more intense and the crowds got larger. They were calling us all kind of names. Monkeys go back to Africa because we got um, like bricks, bottles, cherry bombs thrown at us. But we continued to push, you know, for open housing and just uh, equal rights in general. Yeah, we couldn't have been successful if they hadn't been out there. The whole idea was to show the ugliness of bigotry. Television is now a big thing, and so other people become aware of situations that they otherwise would not have been aware of. In hopes of reducing the conflict put on by the sudden increase of attention, Milwaukee Common Council member Alderman Clarence Miller created a compromise for a housing bill that was quickly passed on December 12, 1967, and covered one-third of the city. However, the NAACP, Father Grappi, and Vel Phillips still persisted in their marching. From the blistering summer heat to the frigid winter temperatures, neither weather, counter-protesters, nor the Common Council could defeat them. Their final march was on March 28, 1968, and consisted of 325 NAACP demonstrators and thousands of supporters. A week after the 200th march, civil rights activist Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Riots ensued across the United States as a reaction to the anger and grief experienced by millions. Conflict and violence became so severe that President Lyndon B. Johnson ordered the mobilization of the Army and National Guard. The severity of these riots resulted in a swift legislative response by Congress, and after a strained and rapid debate, which included Milwaukee as a case study for the need for change, a compromise was reached and the Fair Housing Act was signed into law on April 12, 1968. The Milwaukee Common Council finally reached a compromise that reflected the hopes of the thousands of African Americans throughout the city on April 30, 1968, passing Vell Phillips' Fair Housing Bill. With seven newly elected aldermen, in addition to the persistent and determined efforts of the NAACP Youth Council, Father James E. Grappi and Vell Phillips, the Common Council was able to clearly see the inequality between the northern and southern sides of the city. The city's fair housing law was stronger than the recently enacted national law, and a more beneficial compromise for minorities than originally anticipated. Today, a fair housing law across both Milwaukee and the state of Wisconsin states that all forms of housing discrimination based on color, race, nationality, and religion are strictly prohibited and will lead to serious consequences. The Metropolitan Milwaukee Fair Housing Council actively and effectively handles complaints of housing discrimination throughout the city. Despite the fact that fair housing laws cover all of Milwaukee and the United States today, and the work of Vel Phillips, Father Grappi, and the NAACP played a national role in creating this eventual compromise, Milwaukee still remains one of the most segregated cities in the United States. Fifty years after this historical compromise within Milwaukee, black homeownership is still not above 50% in the city. 200 Nights of Freedom, an organization named after the marches, works towards improving black homeownership by fighting against voucher loopholes in the city. It's still legal to tell somebody you won't rent to them because they're using a housing voucher. That's just a cover for I won't rent to you because you're black. And there currently is a proposal before the Milwaukee County Board. In an era where discrimination and segregation was the norm and African Americans felt trapped in their own country, Vel Phillips and Father Grappi, along with the NAACP, dedicated their lives to the fight for racial equality and freedom. Their efforts towards creating a compromise to help the minorities of Milwaukee helped not only the thousands in the city, but millions across the United States. At that time, you were criminals, you were troublemakers, you were agitators, you were called a whole bunch of adjectives. And today, in retrospect, people now appreciate what you did. <laughs>